Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is January 20th, 2024. And this upcoming week will be a crucial one for Barcelona in two of the three competitions that the club are still alive in. And I have all the details for you, including Xabi's and Frankie de Jong's statements in the pre-match press conference. Also, it's reported that Barcelona are currently tracking a Portuguese gem who's being labeled as the next Joao Felix. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, my name is Mo. And before we begin with the news, just a quick reminder to make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment. All of this helps this channel continue to grow. Now, As you already by now, I have started making two videos per day because there's been a lot of news coming out of Camp Barca. So this will be one out of two videos with the second video coming out in a few hours. Now having said that, let's begin with the news because this upcoming week will be a crucial one for Barcelona with Barcelona playing a total of three matches in seven days in two competitions, which could determine the fate of the club when it comes in two out of the three competitions that they're currently alive with. Now, the first match is tomorrow against Real Betis, who have yet to lose a match in their home stadium since August. And Barcelona did defeat Real Betis 5-0 earlier this season. So hopefully that will play in favor of the Blauranas and hopefully we can get this very important win because if we do falter tomorrow's match or the following weekend, that could mean that Barcelona's La Liga season could be over because right now Girona are eight points ahead of Barcelona in Real Madrid, seven points ahead of Barcelona as well. Now the second La Liga match will be the following weekend against Villarreal who are not having a good season. But let's not forget that earlier this season Villarreal did score three goals against Barcelona. So despite their bad form right now, this is not an opponent, an opponent to be underestimated. But again, hopefully Barcelona can pull a victory against Villarreal, which will be played at Montjuic. Now the third match will be on Thursday, a midweek match, which is in the Copa del Rey against Athletic Club de Bilbao, who are, who are in incredible form under Ernesto Valverde. And of course, if Barcelona do lose that match, that means that the Copa del Rey race or the Copa del Rey tournament will be over for Barcelona. But again, hopefully Barcelona can pull a win and qualify to the semifinals of the Copa del Rey. Now, speaking of the match against Real Betis tomorrow, the, uh, the club have released the name of the players that have traveled to Sevilla in order to face off against Real Betis. And these players are Alejandro Valde, Ronald Araujo, Ferran Torres, Pedri, Robert Lewandowski, Iñaki Peña, Joao Félix, Uriol Romeo, Vitor Roque, Sergi Roberto, Frankie de Jong, Ilkay Gundogan, Jules Kunde, Astralaga, Laminia Mal, Cochen, Fermin Lopez, Kuarsi, Margiu, and Hector Ford. Now, as you can see in the list, Andreas Christensen has been excluded from the squad list. As I reported yesterday, Andreas Christensen had suffered some discomfort in a Copa del Rey match against Unionistas de Salamanca. And even though it was reported that it was a slight discomfort and that he would be ready for tomorrow's match against Real Betis, it seems that the player was not ready and he missed training with the group. And he has also been excluded out of the squad list. Now that means that Andres Christensen joins the like of Joao Cancelo and Inio Martinez as injured defenders. So that leaves Barcelona a little bit short on defenders with only Rona Araujo and Jules Kunde as the healthy center backs. So this could be this could mean a good chance for both Hector Four and Pau Cuarci to show us whether they got what it takes to play on the first team. And as usual, Xavi Hernandez participated in the pre-match press conference ahead of the clash tomorrow against Real Betis. And one thing that drew my attention during this press conference was the following statements. Now, Xavi Hernandez said, Defensively, we are very good. We are also very good at pressuring high. We win balls back and we are excellent in strategy. I'm talking about the last pass to choose well, but we have very young players. I despair because I see the pass, which was my quality, but it's a matter of time. It was not a criticism. It's a feeling of desperation for me. The youngsters have to keep trying. Now, the reason I bring up these statements is because they were once again very shocking to me, especially because according to Xavi Hernandez, the team are very good defensively. They're very good at high press and they're very good at recovering ball. 
And not only that, once again, Xavi Hernandez finding an excuse, saying that the reason the team is not performing well is because there's a lot of young players on it and they're messing up the final pass. Now, I criticized Xavi Hernandez during his final press conference because I was really shocked at what he was saying because he seemed like he was clueless about what was going on, defending the team, saying that everything was do going well, that they were much closer to success than defeat, and also coming up with many excuses, including Gabi's injury. And I made a very detailed criticism about those statements, which apparently did not sit well with a lot of people watching, with many people saying that I'm emotional, that I'm biased, that I'm not doing analysis, that I'm just ranting, that I'm frustrated, that I'm angry, etc., 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 because apparently when things are going well, and I say things are going well, everything's fine, but if I criticize the team, all of a sudden I'm crazy and I don't know what I'm talking about because apparently a lot of people cannot handle criticism, but this time I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I'm going to let you decide. What do you think about these statements? Do you really think that the team is doing really well defensively, that they're really good at high press, that they're really good at recovering the ball? Do you think that the reason why the team is underperforming is because it's full of youngsters? You tell me, and you also tell me whether these statements are an evidence that Xavi has an idea what's going on or whether Xavi knows what's going on, because I don't think he does. But again, I'm not gonna say anything because apparently there's a lot of people who are sensitive to criticism. So you let me know what you think about these statements down below in the comment section. Now more statements, but this time by our midfielder, Frankie Young who has completed or has reached 200 matches with Barcelona. So congratulations to our midfielder. And he did have some words to the press about what's going on with the team. In regards to that, Frankie de Jong said, we didn't play well in that game, referring to the match against Real Madrid. But one game doesn't make a season. We lost the final to Madrid and deservedly so. It was a fair result. We need to improve. But losing one game and we lost it badly doesn't mean we're having a bad season or anything. Now, I do disagree a little bit with Frankie De Jong's statement because, yes, he is correct. One bad result does not mean that the team is having a bad season. But that's not the case here because the team is having a bad season. They've had plenty of bad results. And it's not just a result against Real Madrid that makes us say that it's a bad season. It's all the bad results before that. And, of course, all the bad performances before that. But nonetheless, I do like what Frankie De Jong had to say because he admittedly said that they played bad, that's why they lost against Real Madrid, and that Real Madrid won it deservedly. And I think that's what Xavi Randes should have said in previous press conferences. He should have admitted that. But instead, he opted for saying that things are all go going well, that things are great, that the team is closer to success than defeat. And of course, looking for all kinds of excuses. But nonetheless, I want to focus on the positivity of Frankie De Jong's statements, admitting that there's a problem. And of course, then sending a positive message to the press when he said, There are three titles still to play for. We're in the quarterfinals of the cup. We're still in the Champions League. And we're going to do everything possible to get back into contention for the league. So Frank and Young vowing to do everything in their power in order to be in contention for all three cups. Of course, it's going to be very difficult with Barcelona being eight points behind Girona. We have a difficult quarterfinal match against uh, Athletic Club de Bilbao in the Copa del Rey and of course we do have that difficult round of 16 match against Napoli in the Champions League but nonetheless I like the optimism of Frankie de Jong I like that he is still in it that he still wants to contend or wants to be in contention for all three trophies hopefully things go better hopefully the team can revert the situation but of course we are going to have to wait and see what happens now on to the news that Barcelona are currently tracking a Portuguese gem who has been nicknamed the next Joao Felix. Now, this player is no other than Jose Melro, a 19-year-old versatile attacker who's currently playing for the under-23 team with Benfica. And it's reported that Barcelona have been tracking him for quite some time, and they're currently gathering reports from their scouts. Now, Jose Melro is apparently a very talented player with lots of promise in his boots. And as a result, there are many European clubs currently tracking the situation of the player, with, of course, Barcelona being amongst these clubs. Now, Jose Melro's contract does expire in the summer of 2025 so next summer and Befica are currently working really hard to try to renew the contract of the player because they don't want to lose him on a free transfer but if Benfica are unsuccessful of renewing the player's contract they will try to offload him this upcoming summer in order to make some money off his transfer and Barcelona are currently tracking the situation to see whether they try to sign him this upcoming summer for a low cost or try to sign him the summer of 2025 
as a free agent. Now, Jose Melro does play for the under-23 team at Benfica where he has scored eight goals, but he has also featured with the first team. And it's reported that if Barcelona are successful in signing him, he would be signed for the Barca Athletic, but he would have a first team dynamic, which means he would train with the first team and feature in some matches with the first team until, of course, he is ready to become a first team permanent fixture. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below, giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, peace, Garza.